for Algebra 2, Lesson 4, Dealing with Radicals. Okay, to get started, let's remember that when you add, you can only add like terms. So right here, if you had 3x plus 2x, you guys know you would get 5x. Now, what holds true for variables also holds true for radicals, like square root symbols. So if I had something like this, 3 square roots of 2 plus 2 square roots of 2, I can only add these together because what's under the square root symbol, this radical sign, is the same. So this would give me 5 square roots of 2. Okay, so it's no different. So on 4a, if you look at number 4, it looks like this. 4 square roots of 3 plus 16 square roots of 3. Notice these are the same radical, so you're going to end up getting 20 square roots of 3. All right, so no big deal. Now, I think they're going to try to trick you because look at number 2. And again, I'm on 4a. It says something like this, 5 square roots of 7 minus 2 square roots of 5. Notice these are not the same. So you can't do anything with it. You cannot simplify it any further. So you're just done. That's it. That's all you can do with it. So um, let's move on. And let's talk about um, simplifying square roots. Okay, now you guys know that if you have like the square root of 25, it's 5. That's pretty simple, right? Because 5 times 5 is 25. Or the square root of 36 is just boring 6. Okay, but what if you've got something like the square root of 20? Now, the square root of 20 is not perfect, but I don't want any decimals at all. Don't ever give me decimals, okay? Unless we'd be graphing or doing something like that. But you want to think, is there a perfect square in 20? And let's think about some of your easy perfect squares. Um, 4 is a perfect square because the square root of 4 is 2. And let's see, 9 is a perfect square because it gives you 3. And 16 is a perfect square because the square root of 16 is 4 and like 25 and 36, and of course 100, you know, there's a whole bunch in here. But I'm looking for perfect squares that might be in 20, and I always just try the smaller one, the smallest first, like four. Do you see that four goes in there? I could write this as four times five. Now why four? Because four is perfect. And remember if it's a perfect square, it can come outside. So the square root of four is two. So when it comes outside, it becomes a two. Now five is not perfect, so it has to stay inside. Okay, so the square root of 20 simplified is two square roots of five. Now let's try another one. What about like the square root of 18? Is there a perfect square in there? And I would be like, yeah, nine, nine's perfect. I could write that as nine times two. So the square root of nine, I can pull that out because he's perfect, the square root of nine is three. And 2 is not perfect, so he has to stay underneath that radical sign. So your answer would be 3 square root of 2. Now, if you get something ugly like, well, 17, there is not a perfect square in 17. You're just going to leave it like that, okay? Or the square root of 3, you're done. You can't simplify it any further, okay? So you just have to think, is there a perfect square in there? Let's do one more. What if I did like the square root of, uh, let's do 300. Is there a perfect square in there? Now, some of you might be like, hey, 25 is in there. And I'd be like, yeah, 25 is a perfect square and it's in there. But then so is 100. So I want the biggest perfect square that's in there. So if you pull out 100, the square root of 100 is 10. And then you get the perfect square of 3. Okay? Now let's pretend that you thought about 25. Okay? I want you to see that you could get the same answer. 25 times what gives you 300? 12? Okay. Well, listen, I knew I didn't find the biggest one because do you see there's still a perfect square in 12? I could write 12 as 4 times 3. So you can either do this in two steps. I could have even seen 25 times 4 is 100 and be right back there. Or I could have pulled this out. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. The 3 is not perfect, so he has to stay under. Notice I'm still getting 10 square roots of 3. So it's okay if you don't see the biggest one first. You will eventually get down there to the same answer. Okay, so let's look at something else. Now, you know 
then in, in, you can always add only like terms. We've already done that. Okay? You cannot add things that are not like. You're like, I can't do squat with that. But you can multiply anything. Remember, who cares if they're like or not? You could multiply anything. This would give you, what, 6xy. That is the same for radicals. Okay, let me look at 4a number 5. It says this, 2 square roots of 5 times 3 square roots of 6. Now, again, you couldn't add those, but it's not asking me to add them. It's asking me to multiply them, and you can multiply anything. You multiply the numbers that are on the outside of the radical, 2 times 3 is 6, and multiply the numbers on the inside of the radical, 5 times 6 is 30. So you get 6 square roots of 30. Just be sure there's nothing perfect in there. And 4 doesn't go in there, 9 doesn't go in there. Okay, so that's it. Um, let's try another one. Look at number 7. It says this, 9 square roots of x times 2 square roots of y. Don't make this hard. Multiply what's on the outside. Multiply what's on the inside. And it's just x times y. So it's that simple. Okay? Let me turn the page and see if they get any more difficult. Okay, yeah. Let's look at number 14 before we start doing some over dividing. Number 14 looks like this. Negative square roots of 2. And then in parentheses, they have 3 square roots of 12. Woohoo! Love this one plus 2 square roots of 18. Okay. Now, you can either simplify first and then multiply, or you can multiply and then simplify. Who cares? You'll end up at the same answer. But I'm going to go ahead and simplify first. And here's what I notice. This 12 has a perfect square in it. I can write that. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down here, show my work. Realize that 12 could be written as 4 times 3. And again, why 4? because 4 is perfect, okay? Now, if you take this 4 out, he becomes a what? What is the square root of 4? 2, okay? So now, I've got 2 times 3, I've got 6 square roots of 3. The 3 is not perfect, so he's staying out right there. Don't forget, I still have this guy sitting right there out front. Okay, let's do this one. Instead of the square root of 18, I'm like, ooh, 9 will go in there. So I could write that as 9 times 2. Again, this 9 can come out. When he comes out, he becomes a 3. And you are multiplying right here, so that's going to give me 6 square roots of 2. Now, can you add these together? No, because that's not the same. Remember what's underneath that square root symbol, that radical? It has to be the same. So can't do anything, but I can multiply anything I want. So let's, let's do the distributive property here. You got a negative times a positive, which is negative. If you want to think about it, if you don't see a number, it's a 1 right there. So 1 times 6 is 6. And underneath the radical, you're going to get the square root of 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. Now multiply this times here. You got a negative times a positive. Oops, that should have been a negative. Too bad I don't have an eraser. So you're going to get negative 6 square roots of, ooh, cool beans. Look what you're going to get here. 2 times 2 is 4. But what is the square root of 4? He's perfect, so he can come outside to play. So when you pull the square root of 4 out, it becomes a 2. So I've got negative, gosh, I'm down here at the end of my paper. Negative 6 square roots of 6 minus 12, because that 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, so there's that one. All right, let's try something else. That was one of the hard, more difficult ones, I should say, a little bit more challenging. Okay, look at number 6, and it says this, 10 square roots of 5 over 2 square roots of 5. Okay, don't make this difficult. You can simplify it under the radical. First of all, these are the same thing. The square root of 5 over the square root of 5, it's just 1. They cancel. And 10 over 2 is just 5. So I love that. Nice and easy, okay? Look at number 8, and again, this is from 4a. A 16 square roots of 20 all over 8 square roots of 10. Okay, you can simplify what's on the outside of the radicals. 16 over 8 is 2. And if this will simplify, you can. Think about it. It's like this. 20 over 10, but 20 over 10 is 2. So that's it. 2 is not perfect. You can't do squat with it, so you're going to leave it just like that. Okay? All right. Look at number 9. Number 9 says this, 5 over the square root of 2. Now, there's really no way to do anything with that because this guy 
is an under a radical, and this guy is. The problem is, in math, you never leave a radical in the denominator, a square root symbol. And the reason I'm calling it radicals, because sometimes later this could be a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root. So the word radical is just a general term for anything with this little symbol. So what you're going to do, whatever is down here in the denominator, you're going to multiply the top and the bottom by whatever's down here. Because what is the square root of 2 over the square root of 2? 1. You can multiply anything by 1 and you get the same answer. So look what you get. 5 square roots of 2. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? Well, think about it. That right there is the square root of 4. But what is the square root of 4? 2. So this would be your correct answer. Okay? Let's try another one like that. Okay? Look at number 10, and I'm going to do 10 two ways. You get 4 square roots of 6 over 4 square roots of 3. Now, first of all, whoops, there is no 4 there. Sorry, I copied it down right. It's just 4 square roots of 6 over the square root of 3. Now, here's what I'm going to guess most of you are going to do. You're going to see this radical down there, okay, and you're going to go like this. You're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3, which is fine. You can never go wrong with multiplying by 1. So you're going to get 4 square roots of 18 all over... Now remember, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. Basically, you're losing that radical, which is cool. Now, here's what's unfortunate. You have a perfect square in there. So of 9, you could write that as 9 times 2. Remember, when you pull that 9 out, it becomes a 3. So you have 3 times 4, which is 12, square root of 2 over 3. These are on the outside, so you can simplify. 3 will go into 12 four times. So you're left with 4 square roots of 2. Okay, so you got there. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. Now, let me show you something kind of funny. If you noticed this first, here was your original problem. These are under the radical. You can simplify them. 3 will go into 6 twice. So you are left with 4 square roots of 2, and you're done. So if it'll, if it'll go in there, do it and be done. But here's number 12. We're going to do one last one, and then I think that's all my little video can handle. You've got this. 2 will not go into 27. So I cannot even play this game. But what I do notice, and whether you notice it now or later, who cares? You'll get the same answer. This does have a perfect square in it of 9. So I could write that as 9 times 3. Okay. When you pull this 9 out right here, it becomes, what is the square root of 9? 3. So look right here, you get 27, because 3 times 9 is 27. This 3 has to stay under there, because he is not perfect, all over the square root of 2. Now, can have radicals in the denominator, so whatever's down there, that's what you're going to multiply by, because that's 1. So notice your final answer. What is the square root of 3 times the square root of 2? Hmm, square root of 6. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2? Boring 2. So that's your answer right there. Okay, hopefully that will give you enough to get started with your homework. I'm going to do one little short video after this where you're adding your radicals.